Hi guys, it's Miss M back with another video. We're moving past all of our multiplication strategies and methods that we've been learning the past couple of days, and we're going straight into the two division methods that we learn. One of them is our lucky seven method. We'll get into the box method a little bit later, but let's focus on this lucky seven. I have the problem 35 divided by two. And as you can see, I have an arrow in a parentheses telling us some definitions and terminology that we learned. Two is the divisor because it's being divided by whatever it is, and 35 is our dividend. So the divisor is gonna be divided into the dividend. Okay, remember we talked about it like it was a house party. So on the outside of this house, the divisor would be here. And then on the inside of the house would be our dividend. Just some vocabulary to go over with you guys. Now this is our lucky seven bracket. Remember we extend it all the way down because we're gonna be doing a lot of math involved. So we wanna make sure that we have enough room to do so. So our first step is to ask ourselves, how many times can two, this two right here, go into three? This is where you're gonna to need to know all your multiplication facts and know that two times one is two, two times two is four. Four is bigger than three. So two can go into three one time. So I'm gonna put off to the side two times one, which is the product is two, and I'm gonna subtract two from three, okay? Next step is you're gonna solve, which is one. Our next step is to bring down, because remember, we talked about how this two already talked to this three, now he wants to talk to the next number involved. The next number is five. So five is gonna come down, he's gonna join the party, and he's gonna place himself right with that leftover one. So now this number is really no longer one, it's 15. So we're gonna ask ourselves, how many times can two go into 15 without going over? Well, two can go into 15 without going over seven times because two times seven is 14. So I'm gonna subtract 14 from 15 and I'm gonna get an answer of one when I subtract. Remember in our division, we multiply, bring down, I'm sorry, we multiply <laughs> subtract and then bring down. You wanna make sure you're doing all those steps. Multiply, subtract, and bring down. Now this little one right here is all by himself. He can't go any further, nothing can be brought down with him, two can't go into him. So this little one is our remainder. So I'm gonna put R1. Now remember, we're trying to figure out what the quotient is. You're gonna take each number that we multiplied and we're gonna bring it over and we're gonna say that 35 divided by two, the quotient is gonna be 17 with a remainder of one, all right? That's our lucky seven method. We're gonna keep doing some more problems, so stay with me if you're still a little confused. Hopefully it's bringing back some memories, okay? All division is, especially with this lucky seven method, is multiply, subtract, and bring down. So our next problem, let's do 79 divided by three. I'm gonna go ahead and make my lucky seven bracket. I'm gonna put my divisor on the outside and my dividend in the middle. All right. Same method, you gotta keep asking yourselves, how many times can three go into seven without going over? Well, knowing my three times tables, three can go into seven two times, because three times two is six, so I'm gonna subtract six from seven, and I'm gonna get one. But I still have a leftover person who wants to speak to the three. So I'm gonna bring him down. This one now becomes 19, where I am now asking myself, how many times can three go into 19 without going over? Knowing my facts, three can go into 19 six times because three times six is 18. I'm gonna subtract 18 from 19 and I'm gonna get an answer 
of 1. And the same exact thing. This little one all by himself. Nobody else can be brought down to join him. 3 can't go into 1. So this makes this one our remainder. I'm going to take all the numbers that we multiplied by and bring them to say that 79 divided by 3 will give me a quotient of 26 with a remainder of 1 as well. Okay. Now we know that we've been practicing, we've been practicing a lot with bigger numbers, so we're gonna get into some hundreds and some thousands places. All right, remember, lucky seven, multiply, subtract, bring down, multiply, subtract, bring down. If you have to say that to yourself a bunch of times, then do so. You guys were doing really well with this method when we learned it in the classroom. So the next problem I have is four, I'm sorry, 500 divided by four. Your divisor goes on the outside of the house, your dividend goes on the middle, and you can start. Okay, now here you go, take a look. How many times can four go into five? Four can go into five one time, which is gonna be four, so I'm gonna subtract four from five. I'm gonna have a one where I'm gonna bring down this zero. Now the next step, how many times can four go into 10 without going over? Four can go into 10 two times because four times two is eight and I'm gonna subtract 10 from uh, eight from 10. Let's do your borrowing and I'm gonna get two. But I'm not done because I still have this leftover zero to bring down to the party. So I'm gonna bring him all the way down. He wants to talk to our new guest, number four. So now that number, which was two, now becomes 20. So now you have to ask yourself, how many times can four go into 20 without going over? Well, this is a nice one because four times five is 20. So I'm gonna subtract 20 from 20, and I'm gonna get zero. There is no remainder in this problem. So if I take a look at all of these numbers, read them top to bottom, 500 divided by four is gonna give me a quotient of 125. Don't try reading it bottom to top. You're gonna to get a bigger number than you really need. You're gonna to go top to bottom. Go like this, all right? Now we're going to go into the thousands place, which is basically the same exact thing, guys, except you just have an additional number, and that's perfectly fine. So I have 1,940 divided by 5. Okay, remember you want to make your lucky 7 bracket, the home, a bigger, big, so that way you're not squeezing in your dividend. So my divisor goes on the outside, my dividend goes in the middle, making sure I have enough space, and then I can start. Ah, look, I ran into a problem because we know automatically we're going to ask ourselves, how many times can five go into one? This five goes into one. Five can't go into one. So remember, when that happens, you're going to pair up two buddies together in this problem for this example. So instead of saying how many times can five go into one, I'm gonna say how many times can five go into 19? Your number, your divisor needs to go into a number in the dividend. So if the first number in the dividend is smaller than the divisor, you need to group together and make a buddy. So five can go into 19 three times, because three times five is 15, and I'm gonna subtract. So 19 minus 15 is four. Then I'm gonna go and bring down this four right here. Now I have to ask myself, how many times can five go into 44 without going over? Well, five can go into 44 eight times, which eight times five is 40. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it around and subtract. And I'm gonna get four. Now I'm gonna bring down this leftover zero. You can't forget 
a zero, you can't forget any individual number. Even if it's a zero, you have to bring him down. <laughs> so now I'm asking myself, how many times can five go into 40? Well, five can go into 40 eight times, and I'm gonna subtract 40 from 40, and I'm gonna get zero. So the product, remember, underline and bring and write it down, go top to bottom. The product of 1,940 divided by five is gonna give me a quotient of 388. Now, boys and girls, remember, I taught you a way how to make sure that you were doing absolutely correct and this was gonna give you the right answer. I can take 388, this is our self-checking way, and multiply it by five. I'm taking the quotient and multiplying it by my divisor. So you're gonna go, just like we've been practicing, five times eight is 40, I'm gonna carry that four, five times 80 is 400, plus another four, is going to give me 44, and I'm gonna carry that four again, and I'm gonna do five times three, which I know is 19, or 1,900, not 9,100, I'm getting ahead of myself. 15,000 plus an additional four is gonna give me 19,000. When I am able to check myself like this, I know that I did it correctly, that I got the right quotient because the product I got multiplying my um, product, multiplying my quotient by my divisor is the same as my dividend in the beginning of my problem. So if these two match, you know you did your math right. All right, we got one more problem we're gonna do. Always check yourself, boys and girls. I know it's an extra step and I know we might not like our extra steps, but nothing's worse than getting a wrong problem because you didn't take the time to check. So I have 2,762 and I'm gonna divide that by two. And I'm gonna go ahead, make my lucky seven bracket. I'm gonna write my divisor and my dividend. And I can begin. Two, I know, can go into two one time. I don't even need to really ask myself that. And I'm gonna subtract, and I'm gonna get a zero. But I'm gonna have to bring down the seven. Don't just say the quotient zero. You have all of these additional numbers that need to be brought down and brought to the party, so they gotta come down. So I brought down my seven, now I need to ask myself, well how many times can two go into seven without going over? Two can go into seven three times because two times three is six. And I'm gonna subtract, seven minus six is one. I'm gonna bring down the six next and ask myself how many times can two go into 16 without going over? Well, two can go into 16 eight times, which is 16. And again, I have a zero here, but I'm not done. I have to bring down one last two, this last two, and say how many times can two go into two? Well, two can go into two one time. One times two is two, and I'm gonna subtract. Two minus zero is zero. So I'm gonna underline all the numbers that I used. 2,762 divided by two is gonna give me a quotient of 1,381. Now that's what I'm thinking. Let's just go and make sure that I did it correct. So I'm gonna take 1,381 and I'm gonna multiply that by two. Okay, this is my checking method. One times two is two. Mm -hmm. Two times 160. I'm gonna drop that six down. I'm gonna carry the one. Two times 300 is 600 plus an additional one is gonna give me seven. And two times 1,000 is gonna be 2,000. My product that I just got, it matches my dividend in the middle of my problem. So I know for a fact that my quotient is 1,381. 
All right, guys, just a quick recap with our lucky seven method. You're multiplying, subtracting, then bringing down. Multiply, subtract, bring down. Then go ahead and check off to the side to make sure that you got the right product that matches your dividend. Until the next video, bye, guys.